All right, moment of silence. Uh, we're gonna watch like uh, top ten new Survivor games of 2019. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna pause. Probably gonna go on YouTube, and I'm gonna give you my idea about the games. You still like the forest, huh? The first game that I played on the stream. You do. Unfortunately, we gotta find a new The Forest game. Because I do love, and I know that you guys love watching me playing survival. I love it. But we gotta see what the 2019 survival games will bring us. Shall we? <laughs> oh boy, it's gonna be some dumb shit, I know. In 2019 so far. We think it's going well, and we think that there are some great games coming up in that genre. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 survival. Let me just throw that out. In 2018, it wasn't any survival games. It, w it wasn't any. I mean, it was like some updates, some couple of things, but it wasn't. And I'm not e e either expecting 2019 uh, for any good survivor to come out. Like, you know, Seven Days to Die, The Forest. Yeah, I played the, the full release as well of The Forest. I didn't finish it because it was... I, I played so much The Forest that it was just... I got bored of it. Survival games you'll need to check out in 2019. Now, just as a quick disclaimer, we're aware that survival is a pretty loose category. What we're defining. All of them are coming on alphas. That's the issue of the survival games. It as, at least for this video, is games that revolve around some aspect of survival and gameplay. If Ice aspect is not a survival. We're talking specifically survival horror like Resident Evil 2 or Last of Us 2. That probably wouldn't fly. It has to revolve more specifically around survival. So, without further ado, right, number 10 is Vigor, Bohemia Interactive's follow up to Arm 3 and DayZ. It's seen some. It's an Xbox One game. Some early access play, but the full version will be hitting this year. It is in some ways very similar to DayZ, which is good and bad, but mostly good. It's I know an that Xbox a lot of people one. like to take a dump on DayZ, but it's really not a bad game. Maybe an overused formula, but these are the people who more or less perfected that formula. <coughs> <coughs> Quick questions. Is uh, Xbox One now sharing games with Windows, uh, Windows 10? via the Xbox thingy, so if, if it's an Xbox game, now you can play it on the computer and stuff like that, or not for every game. No, right? However, they didn't perfect melee combat. That is just something that in DayZ it's bad, and here it's not so great, but on the other hand, keeping in mind, as of now, it's a title that's in early access, it looks significantly better than DayZ. It uses the Unreal Engine, which is good. It definitely shows a visual upgrade over DayZ. And I think that the idea is a little more intriguing than the zombie survival. It looks simply nice. what if humanity fell. They've done a few, I think, pretty good trailers to that effect. And honestly, the scenario just works a little bit better in my head. Obviously, the game takes place post some sort of disaster. From what I've gathered, it's a post-war situation in Norway. But of course, that is not the most important aspect of it. It's the gameplay, which honestly is a kind the gunshots, it looks like, I'm gonna say it, it looks like a mobile game. <coughs> it had like a little annotation below, only Xbox One. ...and a better version of DayZ. And if they keep improving it, and maybe make the melee combat not silly, this could be a pretty big title. We don't have a specific date, but it's coming sometime in 2019. I actually do want to keep my eyes on this one. I hope that it turns out to be exactly what it seems like it eventually could. I'm curious to see why is it on Xbox One and it's not a computer game. Because usually survival games, they go to PC and then it goes to the console. That's the protocol. That's how it goes. Because survival games is a PC game. You cannot really play fucking survival games on the console. I mean, you, you can, and there's a lot of them out there, but it's just, that's how the protocol goes. You get attraction by the computer, and then you throw it on the consoles. Number nine is World War Z, which is a game that is based a little bit more in action scenarios. This shit is already out, isn't it? How old is the video? World War Z came out and it was a trash. 
4th of May 2019. Isn't this shit the, what was the out already? Is it trash? Or was it the... Um, the demo or something? The 16th of April is already out. The fuck? April 16. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it already... Initial release is already out. It's a big... And it was a big failure. And days gone too? And no one gave a shit about both of them? And in some respects, it's pretty oriented around the same kind of similar horde-based gameplay that mm. we are looking at in some other games. Days Gone more specifically, which we will talk about later. This is the more Survive the Waves version of it. And I saw Worth the Buy review about this game now that I remember. It was just repetitive, not, nothing really. As most of the actual action gameplay yeah, yeah. of it like, seems to be like revolving around waves. Death, waves yeah. of zombies, that is. However, this is a co-op survival game, which brings in looks of it going to be maybe a of zombies. I'm I don't skipping. don't care how bad the movie was. That's fun. It's coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One. New game from Avalanche Studios, set in 1980s Sweden. This is a game that I think seems pretty cool. It's set in a town where the population is just gone, poof, and there are also big mechs basically killing whatever is left. The game is an open five. world that sets you on several missions, which is nice. There is a mystery, a story to sort through, but also. Wait, this, this game is already out. Generation Zero. Isn't wait 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 wait
All right, let me let me open up another tab for this game just to get an idea in a little bit. What well, what is the name of the game? It's up to it. Very soon. Where and they wanted to little devil inside. Let's have it over there, okay? Revolve around all of the people with unusual jobs like hunting monsters is here. Number six is Remnant from the Ashes, a third person action survival game, which will ah, that's the one that I bought. be based around that's what I pre ordered. Keeping humanity alive at a time when an organic root slash wood slash natural earth type enemy has come out basically to end people i would characterize it as earth is pissed and doesn't want to surround anymore this one is going to be an action survival game like i said with co-op elements and dynamically generated worlds now in theory that means the game could go on indefinitely, but I have a feeling this is one that has got an interesting story arc to it. It is certainly a unique looking game, at very least, so... I am aware that it's not gonna be the next game of the year. I'm aware of that. It just it looked cool, it wasn't very expensive, and I'm like, I can get my hands over there. I can give it a try and see how it plays. If the gameplay matches it, I think it's probably going to be good. That one is hitting PC, PS4, and Xbox One sometime this year. Number five is Project Winter, a pretty interesting looking game in which you not only have to survive, but possibly deceive. This came out. The very. And it's a failure. Various other people playing the game. It's quite interesting. It's an eight player co op survival where certain people are marked traitors and the traitors know each other as traitors, but no one else does. The idea is you have to figure out who is the traitors and get rid of them and survive. That's brilliant. I think that is just such a good idea for a game. And in early access, it has been working out decently. This is a game that doesn't have a massive community yet. And if more people were playing it, it's I think not this would have. be a phenomenal game. No. The devs are constantly adding different features. I think it's great. I think you really need to give it a shot. It I like the style of the game. I'm just going to throw it out there. I like the style of the game, but I didn't like the fact that it was a eight co-op where there's some trader trying to do if it was like if a full world where you expand and you build and you play with others and stuff like that i would like it and and not like an an enemy into the game kind of like what the the long dark is but multiplayer that would be way 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 better idea other than in a way making it into the Battle Royale, which is not really Battle Royale, it's kind of like around there. It's, it didn't do well just because of that reason. It's not in its final state yet, but I think it's really just a bigger community that this one would thrive from, more than any specific edition. It just that doesn't is have out enough. in early access now. It came out in February, and in theory, it should hit its final release sometime this year, though it may be next year, we don't know yet. Number four is Vulcanoids. Actually, a fairly interesting idea. Yeah, it takes place that during I like an expedition this. on an island that used to be your home, but mechanical beings caused a bunch of volcanic eruptions on using drill ships, which basically made the island uninhabitable. Your goal is to get one of these ships, build on it, make it into something that is your own, and use it to reclaim the island. Sounds simple, but aside from the resource management of it, there is also the need to do the regular survival stuff. Honestly, I think this is a brilliant concept. We've seen some pretty good stuff just coming out of nowhere recently, and this is one of those things in my opinion. Vulcanoids hit early access back in January, and I look forward to the full version of it. Number three. Let's see the vo Volcanoid if they announce anything. I'm just Absolutely need the med kit. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward for this game 100%, but I want to know what is the stage of the game right now. It doesn't really say anything. Um, what about Steam? It's probably going to be a Steam game. Okay, so it exists. 
I should get it, man. Is it an early access? First person, build survival, blah, blah, blah. How do I know if it's a uh, popular usage of the huh? early access? I think this game is gonna really do well. Hayden, it's gonna do really well when it comes full release. It, it is a really good idea. I do wanna play it, but I wanna play it when it comes fully. You with me? I'm keeping a hard eye on that one. Three is Dead Side, a game that bills itself as a hardcore multiplayer shooter built around surviving in a large open world. It intends to bring a hardcore survival gameplay experience according to the developers who say they want to be able to balance the dynamics of the shooter and a really intense survival element. It is not a fantastical or zombie oriented game and focuses itself instead on the ruins of a dead human civilization. The game uses Unreal 4 and it does look very good. It is not yet out in early access but it will be hitting early early access sometime this year. I'm quite interested in it. I hope it turns out to be as good as it looks. Number two. Dead Inside? Did he say Dead Inside? Let's see the stage of the game right now. De dead Side. <clears throat> dead Side. Alright, let's see what's up. No user information in 2019. Teen sometime but pixel is the developers and the publishers. Um we will see about this one. I'm just gonna add it on my just gonna follow you just to keep an eye on what's going on with this game. It's like a a day Z type of a game. Um we, we don't know. And days gone. On the PS4? All right. A sort of harsh horror version of survival. He has this days game is gone. going to be very much about resource management, even down to the motorcycle. If you don't keep that thing fueled, you'll lose it. And you only get one. So if you run out, you gotta go find fuel and bring it back to the motorcycle. Add that into the fact that it has some of the coolest looking horde zombie gameplay we've seen. And I think Days Gone is going to be at least an interesting title. Apparently, it's about 30 hours long, the story, but it also sounds a lot like you can pretty much just forego it and survive. It sounds fun to me. Days Gone is hitting PS4 on April 26th. And finally, number one, Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey. Is Did anyone watch any... Uh, days Gone footage, any anyone playing the game or anything like that. I know my chat is a little bit quiet right now. Just making sure <clears throat> if, if anyone watched anything about that one. This one is a survival game based around exploration, expansion, and evolution according to its own marketing materials. And it sounds quite interesting as... Uh, we are not gonna even watch that one. Sorry, guys. That's just nah. Games for you that maybe are a little less focused on survival, but we thought were worth mentioning because they're somewhat adjacent to some of these games. First being Dying Light 2, which is, I think, a bit more of a survival game than the other two that we're going to mention. But still, the main aspects of this are more around the open world, the building of a civilization, and so on. When is Dying Light 2 coming out? Dying Light 2 2020? Interesting. The second one we want to detail is GTFO, which just looks cool. This is boring to watch and it looks like we are only three people. It's fine. Cool. Honestly, the co-op sort of action survival concept of it is made cooler through its own aesthetics, which kind of remind me of a 90s horror. Go use the by now. Movie, and I want to try that. What survival games are you looking forward to the most in this year? Interesting. Horror movie, and I want to try that. What survival game? Don't know about the last one, but definitely I keep my eyes on the rest of them. I do. I'm, I'm interested about this one. I'm curious about this one. Get inside 2018 footage. 
Is it a, a PlayStation 4 game? Is a kickstart there? Yikes. Was there anything over here? I'll get to that in a bit. I've thrown around the words dull and, and boring so far, but I haven't really touched on completely why it feels that way. W one thing is, like I mentioned, the empty environments. The map is absolutely huge. It's so big. It's like ridiculously massive. I'd almost go on to say it's too massive for a game type like this, but that's a little bit more debatable. What really made me lose interest was the quest design, or really lack thereof. Uh, most of the game boy. Generation Zero. What is the price pool that they have on this game? 4 out of 10 from IGN, 6 out of 10 on Steam. Ugh. Does it sound like a good one, huh? Has a very mixed, uh, mixed feelings on this one. Free DLC now available, hundreds become hundred. What type is a single player? It's a single player. Online co-op, online multiplayer. No, sorry, no. I'm watching a wrong thing. It's a co-op, survival, open world, multiplayer, FPS. Does anyone play this game? Wow. That bad, huh? Oh shit. Must be a reason why. Why is this so bad? I'm just curious. Gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Generation Zero. This was a game a lot of people reached out to me to take a peek at, and I was glad to because early on I was really interested in it. That you know the early trailers and the gameplay developer videos look pretty cool for a co-op PC-ish game experience. Plus, it's a side project for Avalanche, the awesome developers behind stuff like Just Cause, hello, and the criminally underrated Mad Max game. Now, it looks like the developers wanted to make their own spin on an open world co-op loot FPS, and they watched Stranger Things, and boom, uh, what we get here is this Generation Zero, a game I really want to like, and, and it seems great on paper somewhat, but honestly, I I'm just not feeling it. It feels extremely early access, it's stretched really thin, even though it technically isn't early access. Now credit where it's due, the developers have been receptive and have been taking ideas and feedback, they've even fixed some glitches so far, but ultimately I, I just find the core of the game unfun. And that to me is a bigger sin than just a, a gameplay mechanic I don't like or a story I don't jive with or anything else. A game that's boring. It looks very interesting man, I don't know, it, it looks... Interesting. Now, how the fuck did they fuck up with the game that bad? A Harry Potter game, same style as Pokemon Go. It's a mobile though, and you have, and you have to walk. Give me a, give me a little bit. The play is just boring to play. It's a shame because the setup is so exciting. The atmosphere and world building at times can be pretty kick ass. Basically, it's a version of history where Sweden got through World War II and decided to spend money bolstering their defenses and technology and robotics and training every citizen in case of an emergency. Then you're a teenager in 1989 uh, with a group of friends returning home from a trip and basically, everyone is gone. It, uh -huh. it feels like everyone disappeared in a flash, like car doors are left wide open, coffee cups are still full, newspapers flutter around. So it's really up to you to kind of unfurl the mystery slowly of what's going on, considering there are killer robots everywhere. So from there, you set out on the lonely landscape, sneaking around and fighting robots, getting loot, and leveling up your character. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to say it's much much better with friends. You can match make with randoms and it's simple and it works, but having conversation and having fun and planning and coordinating your sneaking and attacks makes it a little better. You know, it makes it a little bit more fun. You can solo this game. 
As someone who plays mostly solo, I do appreciate that, but it's just dreadfully dull. Think about how lonely you might feel in something like the early days of Fallout 76. Like, <laughs> no NPCs, nothing really going on, you're just trudging from area to area. And to Fallout's credit, there's way more going on in the environment there than there is in this one. But what I'm saying is basically you need friends to fill the silence and just generally make things a bit more dynamic. I'll get to that in a bit. I I'm curious to see what is the goal of the game. Yes, it's multiplayer. You can queue up with the randoms. But it's not a PvP. I've thrown around the words dull and, and boring so far, but I haven't really touched on completely why it feels that way. W one thing is, like I mentioned, the empty environments. The map is absolutely huge. It's so big. It's like ridiculously massive. I'd almost go on to say it's too massive for a game type like this. But that's a little bit more debatable. What really made me lose interest was the quest design, or really lack thereof. Uh, most of the game boils down to creeping from place to place through giant fields, across mountains, farms, small towns, to get to a marker. You know, you find a map, a scrap of note, something written on a wall, or an answering machine message, giving you a clue as to where to head next. No problem on that one, I don't see the problem. ...to look for more survivors, which, spoilers, the game kind of strings you along and you never really find them. It strings you along with threadbare quests asking you to loot houses for items and stuff. All the houses really feel like the same cookie-cutter design. I saw one house early in and then, like, five hours later or so, drastically deeper into the map, I was seeing the same exact styles with few variations, and, and they just felt pointless to go in unless it was a mission or if I was really in dire need of, like, a med pack or something. And the loot spawning is weird, too, to say the least. You clear out areas or houses to check off boxes, but occasionally I ran into issues where it seems like the loot just didn't spawn. It just wasn't there. Now, the loot itself is fine, though. The inventory system works. There's lots of little gadgets and doohickeys. Getting cosmetic items for your customized, created character is fairly consistent and falls in a nice, weird, late 80s, early 90s vibe that I really appreciate. Weapons come in various different states and conditions and are Swedish named a lot of the time and have various parts that you can equip, like silencers and scopes and optics. Combat itself... I actually kind of like, not to contradict myself, but, you know, it, it doesn't actually control that well. That's what I said, it looks okay. Even with tweaking the sensitivity on PC, ADS and normal aim never felt quite right, and it can all feel kind of slow and chunky or way too much. You can level up how fast you can aim and reload and eventually more, but it only goes so far because it just feels weird. But what I do like, like I said, the combat I do enjoy is the feel, the sound, and, and the feedback the weapons give off. It's really satisfying to, like, blow off a mechanical part of a robot. There, there's usually a loud bang, some cool sparks and flame effects, and it's really fun to dissect a robot with a well-placed sniper shot. Problem is, the other hey, stuff, the stealth itself, is weird. It feels weird. I get that they're all robots out there, and they have perfect sound and vision and all this technology, but the rules just don't really feel very strong. Hours and hours in, it seems like everything is inconsistent. It just feels like the stealth is kind of broken at times. Sometimes foliage works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's harder for them to hear you in the rain, like it's designed, and sometimes it doesn't. Regardless, one thing I don't like about the giant environments with this is that because the robots are so sensitive and they can see so far, you have to go really long stretches on land walking completely crouched and you move really slow i don't mind the challenge of sneaking and stuff but when you move so slow it just makes it all really tedious you know combined with those unsatisfying missions it all just feels kind of like a slog the further north you get the cooler the robots become they get really massive too which helps but it takes a while and the game shows a lot of its gameplay cards before that and i found myself caring less and less about seeing what else the game had the more i went on which really, I think a game should do the opposite. But what I do like is the stealth through through co-op. That helps it. Coordinating, sneaking past enemies where one person throws a radio to distract them, or one person uses a... Steel is not convincing me that it's not a good game. I don't know. ...flare to disrupt their trackers while someone else provides cover fire. When the game is really working like this, and you're all kicking ass, it can be kind of cool. It can. Uh, the robots are interesting, and they can actually be pretty terrifying at times, too. Plus, leveling up your character, you can sort of specialize yourself as like a scouter, someone who runs fast, a shooter in some ways, so it makes the leveling up feel a little bit more decent, and like a little bit with classifications that you could eventually get. Frankly, there's a lot of skill tree to grind through, and it can be somewhat satisfying. But again, if you're solo, you might feel like a lot of it doesn't matter much. I just wish the game leaned into the team stuff and, and fun encounters more. I mean, you can say that the threadbare quests give you room to make your own adventures with friends online, but the environments being so bland, it didn't really matter much to me anyway. But 
on the environment i've been watching the video and i can see only just a couple of robots around not nothing really interesting happens you know something weird or some randomness into the game you know but i'll end on a high note the music is really cool 80s inspired stuff and the environment at times can look pretty incredible foliage and trees look great it's beautiful it looks beautiful looks like another game that is already half dead at release and will die in a week and hello hello to you too man um looks interesting now it depends what they're gonna do with the game is they have they have the base of the game there it feels like a base of a game that they can build on not as a finished product that's what i'm seeing right now Great, mysterious the graphics and atmosphere combined to really walk a good line between dreary and lonely and just stark european beauty really with this game the foundations are there for something better if you notice for every bad thing i had like one okay to good thing you know the cool robots the shooting of them the playing with friends it's there it just needs more content and yeah. more interesting stuff besides the robots themselves because otherwise there's nothing that's really yeah. it it doesn't really feel worth the ride at all especially what I will do in this game 100% is like building your own vehicle, car, bike, and all of the above. That's number one. I don't know if they have any craftables. I will 100% go craftables on everything. On this one. It, 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 feels, it feels like it could be a really good idea. A base, like you can build a base. It doesn't sound like a bad idea at all, even though they might have issues with the co-op co where someone needs to host the game and they're going to join in their game. So if the person that is hosting the game is going to have a base in one location, if the individuals are there too, they have like another base, blah, blah, blah. Make it like a follow 76 where you have a blueprint a blueprint of your building you just pop it in on whatever word you go it, it can it can work it sounds like a good idea they can they can expand into it craftables repairs uh, modifications of weapons you know you, you can take that pathway you know so adding like mini bosses around the map um a quest where you know more interesting quests maybe more challenging maybe you know it it looks like a good base of a game it's just they have to be smart about it and add more things into it it can actually be a really really nice game that i will 100 percent play actually considering there are so many other games out there demanding your time right now i don't know if generation zero is really worth it I'll keep my eye on it like how it's updated if it changes because i really really wanted to love this one but of course, that's a before you buy. You know how this is. I gave you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinions. So now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Like with every game I kind of dunk on, there will be a defense force. But like, I want to hear from you guys if you really enjoy this. Sounds like a follow 76, but less stuff to do. <clears throat> I wouldn't 100% compare it with the follow 76 because follow 76 is just a failure for me. 100% failure um ideology maybe so, uh, like an uh, an ideology but it looks like more more like a survival game a more realistic survival game other than a fantasy i don't know it just looks so fake um the the world to follow 76 you felt like I'm, I'm living in a different universe while this one looks like it could be an actual place down the street you know what i mean uh, it looks more realistic than than Follow Seventy Six, which it looked like so fake. The the world, the design, and everything. It didn't look immersive, real. This it does. Now it's up to them what they're gonna do again with the game. It looks no bad. It actually doesn't. If they're gonna expand into it, and if they do some cool updates and and add more things into it, they, they might actually may manage to pull it off and make a really interesting survival game, but uh, mm, not being able to do PvP, an actual multiplayer online PvP, and fighting the AI, 
you take the category of the seven days to die which is a huge game with a huge map and a shit ton of zombies and quite few events happening around that spice up the game and makes it a little bit more interesting than looting around and killing robots right eh, what to do welcome to 2019 where people don't know how to do survival games I'm playing with just one other friend. We are about 20 hours on gameplay in. We have made it a good way north and the difficulty has gotten much, much harder. The southern island were a bit too easy and now uh, that there is a north is completely different gameplay. Sneaking, coordination, attack is a must. The gameplay itself and the battles with the machines are satisfying and fun. Looting is enjoyable only because every so often you get a new, a new or updated weapon or attachment. When I got my much anticipated rocket launcher, I was super excited. Now for the bad part, which in my mind there is only one major bad uh, part about this game, it's the missions. We have come across a handful that seems to be broken and the ones that are not don't give the best direction. So a lot of the time you aimlessly running around trying to find a certain farm or household. Some are more obvious than others. The inventory could use a little bit of reworking, but it is doable for now. A stash box in, in the safe house will go a long way. There is a safe house, I guess. Okay. Other than that, uh, the guns are satisfying to use the maps and blah, blah, blah. Night circle, cycle, yeah, yeah, yeah. All in all, play with some friends, and if you get stuck on a mission, just move on and you will enjoy the game just fine. Also, don't spend too much time on the southern island, as you will find the game to be empty and somewhat boring. When you reach the north is when the game gets exciting. The giant machines run wild and are of much ad uh abundance all right I, I guess so i guess there is like mini bosses after mini bosses like higher creatures and, and so on adding a little bit of a challenge into the game i, I hear you i got you again it looks a fun game not as fun as hey i'm going to play now but it looks fun enough uh yeah yeah 